at this point, I honestly don't know whether this headache is sinus headache or if it's caused by this show. I'm Mason the Brock Henderson, and this is Supergirl, season one, episode what three now? Like this is the third episode, and things are actually somehow getting worse. Oh, okay. Get through this. So this episode, let me talk about what I liked first, because I can get through that fast. There were some scenes that made me laugh, and not for the good reason. First, there was the scene where she fights the the bad guy, Kroll, or whatever his name is. She fights him for the second time, and she, all this time she's been talking about how you know, she's not going to call on her cousin, she, she can do this herself. And they've talked about how Superman has fought this guy before, and neither one has come out on top. So they've just fought and that's it. And so I love the fact that she actually thinks she can take this guy, even though Superman couldn't even take him. Which surprises me because of how slow the fights are, but that's just poor editing maybe. But sure enough, he's about to kill her, and here comes Superman, saves her life. And I just, I laughed, because I was like, I, I don't know, it made me laugh. It's just, I can do this on my own, I can do this on my No, you can't. Shut up. <laughs> saves her life. And then it also made me laugh whenever they have all this stuff going on in the very end. Like, she goes back to her office, and she's, like, all upset. And then she sits down at her computer. She's like, Clark, hi. And I just, I started busting out laughing. I don't know why. It just cracked me up to think of Superman sitting at his computer. Like, I need to get in touch with her somehow. See, I could fly over there in a couple... You know what? No. Hi. <laughs> just, that's it. And those two scenes made me laugh. The rest of it, I was sitting there... I, I probably facepalmed a good five times this episode, which... It's improved from the 20 times I did in the first episode, so, you know, they are lessening their face palm count, I guess. But, it's, it's a chick flick. It's a chick flick. And that's what I was worried about when I was going into this, watching one of the previews had a fight song playing, because that's, that's the new girl power song going on. And they were playing that during the commercial, and all the other previews I'd seen made me kind of excited, you know, look pretty action-y. And then they showed this commercial where, this is my fault! And I'm just like, oh god, is this going to be a chick flick show? Is this what this is? And, sure enough, that's what it's turned into now. That's what it is. Because now it's more about her relationships and other relationships going on, you know, between her and her sister, her and the guy she likes, her and the guy that likes her. Um, her boss and, the, and that one guy were kind of having this for, that's all it's about now. The action is now second nature to the show. Like that's, oh, yeah, there's a bit of action, but who cares? We want to know what's going on with Kara and James. I mean, come on. And I'm just, I don't want that. I don't want that in a superhero show. I don't care that it's about a girl. I want to see a superhero show. This is not a superhero show. Let me just point that out really right now not a superhero show and it makes me second guess watching this show but I'm still gonna watch it just so I can review it and crap on something so anyway let's talk about the really bad parts of this um, so first of all they do once again she has you know she has her interview at the very beginning a lot of meaningless stuff going on, like she's flying, and then she flies over here for some reason, no real reason, and she flies over here, and it's just like, you don't have to fly over there, or over there, or over there. you can just stay in one spot, you can stay flying in that spot if you want to, but why, flying over here, flying over here, standing here, standing over there, it's just, she's moving around for no reason whatsoever, and I'm just, stay still, <laughs> like, yeah. It's one thing, like, nervous tics where you're, like, sitting there tapping on something, something like that. It's another thing to be, like, flying over here, you're flying over there, and it's just for no reason at all. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in this episode for no reason whatsoever, just to fill time, it feels like. 
But, so the interview happens. Of course the boss doesn't recognize her. And then, it's really funny that she doesn't at all because the next day she's talking to uh, Kara as Kara, not Supergirl. And she starts, like, picking up... Is that a s- s- slight... Oh, actually, this is this is later on in the episode. She's Kara's reviewing her uh, piece on Supergirl. And she's, like, picking up all these little things about Kara's tone of voice, like... It sounds like you have something to say. And then she talks about how she knows that Supergirl is, you know, a certain age because, you know, she, if she's not, well, I want to get, you know, she knows all this stuff about what Kara's voice, about Supergirl. If she is that, like, focused, if she is that detail-oriented, or she's able to see little, how could she not figure it out? Like, seriously? Like, that's, <laughs> it's just, it doesn't make any sense to me. I'm like, she's able to hear all of this stuff in Kara's voice. She's able to figure out about how old Supergirl is by looking at her skin, whatever. And she seriously can't make the comparison. Why? How? Why? And it, once again, like, it really, it takes me back to my my kid days. When I was a kid, you know, growing up with these shows with people that have to hide secrets or whatever. Two two shows in particular that did not do a good job of hiding the sacred identity, but only because it's a kid's show and that was part of the fun. It was stupid funny for a kid. Um, Danny Phantom, Fairly Odd Parents. Both of those shows, Danny did not do a great job of hiding the fact first of all, Danny Fenton, Danny Phantom, same hairstyle and nobody could figure in so many times when he's you know as Danny Phantom he's talking to his parents and says something that should instantly give if his parents were smart they would figure it out but of course they're stupid and so that's part of the fun of it that's part of the the joke of it uh Timmy Turner does a very poor job of hiding the fact that he has fairies and you know Mr. Crocker knows and he's stupid and his parents are even stupider and so that's the part that's part of the fun of the show this is trying to be serious about the secret identity, trying to be serious about the fact that she's hiding all of this, but they're not going all the way through with it. It's like they're trying to be serious, but then her boss is obviously an idiot if she's not able to make the comparison. She's at the party. She's standing right next to a poster of Supergirl, and nobody's able to figure it out. The guy crashes the party, the the main villain in this episode, crashes the party, and she starts running off. She takes off her glasses, pulls her hair down, still in the middle of the party. It's not like she's out in the hallway. She's still in the middle of the party running away. And it's just, it feels like it's one of those, it's one of my kids' cartoon shows where they're hiding secret identities, but not really because it's part of the joke. But it's not part of the joke. It's not supposed to be a joke, but it feels like it is. And that's really frustrating. Like, if you're going to be serious about it, really be serious about it. Don't just, oh yeah, you know, she just, they're talking about superheroing right next to people, but they don't hear anything. Oh yeah, her boss is super observant about a lot of stuff, but can't make the connection because who knows. And it's just, it doesn't make any sense to me. And that's just one of the many things that frustrates me about the show. <laughs> um, so yes, that was frustrating. Once again, having Jimmy Olsen on the show. Why? Who knows? That just for namesake, the fact that he knows Clark Kent, the fact that he's good friends with Superman, and he are. They have this one scene, and let me just go ahead and talk about this really fast. When like gets a hold of this guy's office that has died recently, and so he gets his office and takes it over. And that's where they've got all the Supergirl stuff now. Stupid for many reasons. One, do they really? Did he really just go there to to like the front office or something? And be like, hey, you know that guy that just died? I want his office. Why? Uh, no reason. Oh, okay, we'll give you the keys. Or did he like move all the stuff in there, hoping that nobody will go in there for any reason? Two, cleaning crew. They obviously have a cleaning crew in this building. Do you really think that the cleaning crew is not going to go inside that office and check out what's going on? And three, how do they not have cameras on this hallway, whatever it is? You're really telling me that they don't have cameras showing 
when Kara and James all going down this hallway towards this office that's supposed to be abandoned. Like, they, they, they act like this is this really clever thing. Like, ha 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 ha, we're having an office in the same building. It's clever. No, it's not. It's really not. It's stupid, and it would be found out like that. So, that's stupid. Um, but anyway, they're in this office, and I can't remember exactly what the conversation was, but Jimmy pretty much gives away Clark Kent's secret identity to win. And, of course, it's it's supposed to be funny whenever he's like, oh, Clark Kent? Superman? Oh my gosh! Like, <laughs> I, I can't wrap my head up. It's supposed to be funny, but it just comes off as goofy. Um, but just the fact that he just nonchalantly gives away his secret identity. Like, yeah, see, that's why that's why Jimmy Olsen in the comics never knew Superman's secret identity, because he is terrible at keeping secrets. <laughs> um, but apparently in this show, Jimmy knows. So there's that. Um... Let's see. Okay. Second fight that they have. Uh, Kara and the... Super the first fight, she... Like... He's, he's attacking her. She attacks him a bit. The fight scenes, once again, are just absolutely... They're poorly shot. They are poorly edited. Um, they're so slow. Like, you think about Man of Steel and how just, you know, action-packed and and everything's going on and this is just like you know standing standing waiting he charges up his attack and uh, and then she goes no uh, and gets hit and it's just like this is Supergirl right Supergirl same powers as the man of steel faster than a speeding bullet faster than a speeding bullet and this guy charges up his attack for like two whole good seconds and she still gets hit by it, because she's too slow. She's too slow, ladies and gentlemen. Too slow. And she she gets hit so many times that I'm just... I honestly wonder if she's even trying to fight. Like, because I, I, when I'm watching this, all I can think is, Superman couldn't beat this guy? Like, he's so slow. And I, like I said, poor editing. It's not because this guy is actually that slow. It's because these people don't know how to edit a good fight scene. Um... So, that's frustrating to watch, just watching them slowly move around the screen, watch the girl of steel, <laughs> supposed to be the man of steel's cousin, supposed to be fastest being bullet, go, <clears throat> and just, yeah, that was, that's frustrating. Um, but she like, knocks off his core processor or whatever in the, in the first fight, um, so he kidnaps the guy that was talking down Supergirl in the first or second episode, whatever. I, I can't remember what, what he said exactly, but pretty much said that she is more menace than hero. Because you've always got that one guy um, that finds the hero a threat. Uh, but he gets kidnapped, of course, setting up for her to try to rescue him. And either, because she fails, well, now he's got to stand up and say that Superman did it, not her. Um, but there's just, when he's in, inside of this bad guy's lair or whatever, first of all, the guy playing the bad guy, not, not that bad. He, he actually, he goes so over the top that it's kind of enjoyable. Um, just, I don't know, the way he, the way he portrays this character, just really, it was enjoyable. He was probably the only enjoyable character on this episode. Um. But you know, like, he, he's getting all close to him and stuff, like, can you fix it? Like, breathing into his ear, and you're just like, whoa, dude, boundaries. Uh, but this guy, Lord is his last name, you know, because he, he is all powerful. <laughs> and so this big business tycoon who's also, like, a engineering genius, he, you know, he's been kidnapped so he can fix this guy's suit. And he's like, can you fix it? He's just like... I'll need this, he says like a bunch of engineering sounding words, I'll need this, 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 
and a Dr. Pepper. And he's like, oh, that's fine. The Dr. Pepper's for me. Like, you, you know how when you tell a joke, it's funny until you explain it? This show doesn't get that. He names off all of this stuff and finishes with a Dr. Pepper. Like, uh, okay, I get it. It's because... And then he immediately felt the Dr. Pepper's for me to drink. And you're just... Really? You're not going to use the Dr. Pepper to fix the machine? Oh, I thought that was... I didn't understand what you meant by Dr. I'm like, Dr. Pepper, what is that? Like, that's a weird thing to use to fit. And then you said it was for you to drink, and now we're not that stupid, Supergirl show. We're not that stupid. <laughs> we, we, get, we get the joke. It's funny. He asks for all this stuff and says to Dr. Pepper at the end. We get that it's for him. It's not like we're going, mm -hmm. I don't get it. It really insults my intelligence. It really does. I mean... The fact that they think that joke needs to be explained insults all of our intelligences, really. The fact that they don't think we can get that joke. Really, really dumb. And so there's that. Then there's the fight scene. Um, like I said, super, she's about to die. Superman steps in, saves the day. She wakes up after being knocked out on her couch. Finds out that Jimmy called Superman... Which, you know, makes sense. She was about to... And, of course, she gets mad at him. And I'm just like, really? <laughs> like, here's her reasoning. She wants to do it by herself. Okay. So, you want to do it by yourself, and you're about to die. But you're mad because you, you're, you're alive. I don't get it. I don't... It just... Facepalm. Again. Like... You would have died if he didn't call Superman. You would have died. And she just... She's pissed off. She's pissed off about it. Don't ask me why. She wants to she wants to do it on her own and possibly and get killed doing it. But you know what? At least she did it on her own. At least she didn't die with somebody else helping her. She died on her own. That's that's stupid. And it's really <laughs> at that point in the show, I nearly just shut it off and said, Done. But I was like, you know what? Maybe maybe she'll come around. Maybe we'll do that cliche thing where she realizes, okay, Jimmy, you were right. Nope. Nope. They go to this this uh, party that they're having where, you know, her boss or whatever is releasing her su Supergirl thing. And uh, first she's cars dancing with Wynn, and you're like, okay, so now now that he rejected her, now she's going to go to the guy that she friend-zoned. Nope. Jimmy shows up and is like, may I have this dance? And just like, <sighs> And then he apologizes to her. apologizes for saving her life yep and admits that it's his fault admits that the only reason he called Superman was because he was scared to lose her yep and here's if you're wondering why it's you know so odd that I'm fr frustrated with this here's the main reason it's not like Superman stepped in right before Kroll or whatever his name was was going to win the Reactron, I'm just going to call him that because that's his name. It's not like he stepped in right before he was going to win. He had won. She was on the ground. She was about to pass out, and he was about to zap the life out of her. And Superman came in and blocked it. Like, it was literally, she was about to die. She had no chance of winning that battle. She had no chance of surviving that battle. And Superman stepped in and saved her because Jimmy... And she was actually pissed that he called Superman in for that reason. Do you get my frustration? It's because I've seen it before where, you know, somebody they're they're going into battle and nobody believes in them but they want people to believe in them and they go in and somebody like steps in to help them fight 
and they're upset that that person helped them. I, I still don't agree with that, but it makes a bit more sense than, you know, it's almost like I go into a sword fight battle. I'm fighting that guy who's much tougher than me, much better at swords than I am. And somebody wants to come help me. One of my close friends wants to come help me because they don't want to see me die. And I'm like, no, I got it. Most of the time, what happens is my friend would step in anyway and help out. And then I would get pissed at them for not letting me try to fight my own battles. In this case, in this episode, it's like I fought the guy. He knocks the sword out of my hand, knocks me on my back, and has the sword ready to plunge into me as I'm passing out. And then my friend steps in and blocks the sword away. And, like, not knocks the guy away and saves my life. And then I get pissed at my friend for saving my life. That's what happened. That is literally what happened. And then my friend apologizes to me for saving my life. That's what happened. And it doesn't make any... I'm trying to keep it clean for YouTube. Any freaking sense whatsoever. And it really... Talk about jumping the shark. This show has done it so many times in three freaking episodes. <sighs> anyway, so they have the final battle, and yeah, the the DEO comes in with this information about removing the reactor core or whatever. Shocker. She knocked off the reactor core the first time, and that shut him down. So what you have to do is take out the reactor. That's incredible. I don't know how anybody would have thought of that. So she, you know, she starts to fight him. Have some stupid, once again, slow, slow moving action. He uh, shoots her a couple times. She blocks it onto a beam, which almost falls on wind, but she goes over to catch it. And then he stands there and, like, glares at her for a second. And then Jimmy's like, hey, I'm Superman's best friend. If you really want to hurt him, kill me. And then starts to run. And that guy goes outside. And because Jimmy's moving, unlike Supergirl, he can't hit him. Yeah. Take some hints from Jimmy, Supergirl. But then she goes outside, covers her hand in lead so she can grab the reactor. And he shoots at her. She's blocking it, blocking it, blocking it. And grabs his reactor. And he's done. Save, save the day. Yay. I could just... I wasn't... In most action scenes, I want to feel tense. I want to be like, what's happening next? What's going to happen? Like, you, you see how, how I'm up here right now? I, I'm, I'm up here. My head's up here. I like my head to be down here. I like to be slouched in tense action scenes. And I know it's not good for my posture, but you know what? This is what I should feel like. I should... Mm, Mm, but no, the whole time I was just sitting there like this, completely just, whatever. I don't, I don't care. I really don't care. She, she could go up to him, snap his neck right now, and that would be the only thing that could possibly save the show. Because then at least it would give me something to talk about. Because at this point, you've already completely just, like, just thrown everything realistic out the window with this whole. Jimmy saving your life and then getting pissed at him for like it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Oh, and I almost forgot about this because it was completely pointless. They have like a little thing between um Kara's boss and the the Lord guy, whatever. They're at this party and they're like dancing. And he's trying to figure out how she got her source, and it, it seems like they have a relationship or something. Nothing happens. They talk for a little bit. He tries to figure out her secret. Like, do I have to do something? Get, like, do I have to seduce you or something like that? And then she says, "Well, I need to show my power even more by leaving my party early. Goodbye," and leaves. And it was literally just two minutes of nothing. Nothing happens. You just see that they kind of have maybe a thing, and that's it. Um, and like I said, it ends with, well, actually, she goes to talk to Jimmy about a date, and. Lois Lane's little sister is there, and apparently they have a thing, and you're just like, of course, because, you know, there, there wasn't already a love triangle going on, so now we have to have a love square, because that makes things so much better. Um, so yeah, that, that happened, and then she gets on a computer, Clark talks to her, says, I couldn't even beat Reactron, and you did it. 
guess this was a job for Super. And you're just like, you couldn't beat that guy? Really? This Superman sucks. <laughs> Superman from this show really sucks. Um, and that's that's it. Two more things I need to talk about really fast, and then I'm done because I seriously I'm getting a headache thinking about this show. They have this this confirmed for me that this was a chick flick show. It. This may have been, yeah, this is how it ended. She's on the computer talking to Clark, and then she's at her, um, she's at her apartment with her sister Alex. And they are talking, and while they're talking, Girls Just Want to Have Fun is the song playing. I'm just like, chick flick. Chick flick. <laughs> just, <laughs> you weren't art. You weren't already almost there by focusing more on relationships than you are on action. But then you start playing these girly songs. They had, um... What was the other one? One Way or Another, I think, was the other one they had on. They just have these girly songs on there. And I'm just like, chick flick. <laughs> They're making it into a chick flick. It's not a superhero show. It is a chick flick show. Finally, and I know this is way at the beginning. I don't know why I didn't start with this. The way they open the show is just frustrating. They they have the uh, like her narrating, I'm Supergirl and this is I'm sent to the planet by my parents to protect my cousin, but he was already Superman, but now I'm working with my sister and the DEO she talks for like a good two minutes and then they go into previously I'm Supergirl and do even more review I'm like, really? You couldn't even decide whether you wanted to start off with her narrating what's happened or go with a previously I'm super so you did both and wasted a good four minutes of my life recapping everything that didn't really happen in the first... And by didn't really happen, I mean like, oh, okay, nothing really happened this episode. It was all just kind of boring. If you couldn't tell, I don't like this show. It's really frustrating. There are a lot of problems with it. This is supposed to be a superhero show, Instead, they're turning it into a chick flick show, all about relationships, not so much about the action and the fighting and the superheroing. So, if, yeah, the ladies may love this show. Also, because the guy playing Jimmy, I, I'm assuming he's kind of a hunk because. Everybody seems to be, all the girls seem to be fawning over him. It, like, all the girl characters in the show seem to be fawning over him. I'm a guy, so I don't, I can't really judge um, how other guys look. But, like, that seems to be the only reason that Jimmy is in the show. Well, okay, two reasons. He's a hunk, and because he knows Superman. He's a good friend with Superman. Those are really the only two reasons he's in there. And that's it. The girl playing Supergirl, she's... Nothing really that Supergirl about her, you know. Like it just it feels like they picked really, they picked a pretty girl and said you're Supergirl, and that's what happened. Like there's nothing that makes me think oh she's Supergirl. Like about there's nothing about her acting. There's nothing about her look. It just it doesn't scream Supergirl to me. <laughs> and nothing about the show really feels like it's from the DC universe. Even I said it before the tone of the show doesn't feel like it's in the DC universe. It's just completely wrong. Everything about the show is wrong. And what they've done now with Jimmy and how he saved her life and she got upset with him and he agreed with her. And it wasn't even like, when he agreed, it wasn't even like she realized she was wrong too. It was like, he, he said he was wrong and she was like, you have to let me do this on my own. And I'm sitting there talking to myself again, watching the show saying, yeah, yeah, you gotta let her die on her own. Come on, Jimmy. Get get on. And, I mean, it honestly just makes me think this is one of those girl power shows. It really is. And if you don't believe me, just think about it. The girl says, I'm right. And the guy, instead of saying, look, I just saved your life. <laughs> um, you might want to thank me. No, he admits he was wrong. Come on. If that isn't a girl power moment, I don't know what is. It's all about 
these men are stupid. They don't know what they're doing. He just saved her life, but you know what? He's still wrong. So I don't know if that was the thought process behind that, but that's certainly what it sounded like to me. It made me think, this show hates men. <laughs> um, and of course, then you've got poor Wen, who is clearly very much in love with Kara, before she even was Supergirl, and just completely pushed to the wayside because Jenny's a hunk. <sighs> Tall, dark, and handsome, right? That's that's Jimmy in a nutshell now. No more pasty faced, red haired, freckled kid. Nope. And so poor Wynn just he does all this stuff for her, but he's friend zone now because girl power. Go get the tall, dark and handsome man. So, like I said, chick flick show, really dumb, poor action, poor acting. Okay, not poor acting, but eh, acting. Story stupid. Yep. Pretty much it. I'm done. Peace out.